Welcome to the Gooder Podcast, where we talk with powerhouse women in CPG about their journeys to success. This episode is sponsored by Retail Voodoo, a brand development firm guiding mission-driven consumer brands to attract new and passionate consumer base, crush their categories through growth and innovation, and magnify their social and environmental impact. If your brand is in need of brand positioning, package design, or marketing activation, we are here to help. You can find more information at www.retail-voodoo.com. Hi, Diana Frank here. I'm the host of The Gooder Podcast, where I get to talk to the powerhouse women in the food, beverage, and wellness categories about their journeys to success and their insights on the industry. Thanks for joining us today. Really quick here, this episode is brought to you by Retail Voodoo. Retail Voodoo is a brand development firm. Our clients include Starbucks, Kind, REI, PepsiCo, Heike, and many other market leaders. We provide strategic brand and design services for leading brands in the food, wellness, beverage, and fitness industries. If your goal is to increase market share, drive growth, or disrupt the marketplace with new and innovative ideas, give us a call. Let's talk. You can visit retailvoodoo.com or email info at retail-voodoo to learn more. Well, today we get to speak with Miss Sherry Jackson, the CEO and co-founder of Fruise Balls. Now, Sherry goes by many titles, Queen Baller, Chief of Everything Officer, and Mum are just a few. Could be why we like each other. I'm not sure. Um, And Sherry attributes her success in marketing to her fundamental belief that each human is an inestimable value. Everything she does, including the way she interacts with her customers, is framed by that philosophy. Sherry is co-owner of the company that makes Fruise Balls, a delicious, healthy snack created in New Zealand. Fruise Balls are found in every major supermarket in New Zealand and in select stores throughout Australia, the UK, Europe, and now the USA. Yay. Well, hello, Sherry. Hi. How are you, Diana? Um, It's so nice to talk to you. Yes. Nice to talk to you again. Now, are you in Chicago? Remind me. Yes. I'm out in the western suburbs of Chicago, and it's a Mm -hmm. lovely, sunny day for a change, so that's good. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, we're getting to those months now where you might be not be saying that for too much longer. <laughs> that um, is true. So I am so excited to connect with you again. And just for everyone to know, Sherry and I met at the Sweets and Snack Show earlier this year. Uh, it was the first show that I'd been to in a year and a half, I think, pretty much mm-hmm. everybody else. And she and Fruise Balls were holding court in the center of the floor. It was so <laughs> awesome. Uh, did that show end up being a good one for you? It was excellent. It's actually the first show that we had presented Fruise Balls, oh. and um, it was it was tremendous for us. We we had so many. Uh, we were just jammed the whole time. It was really, great. yeah. Oh, it was great. I think it ended up being a really good show for the people that did go because it was the the buyers that were there. I think the ones that were literally in the market they were not a lot of looky loos like you would expect to see in a regular show yeah, yeah. and so uh, what i heard at least from the po- people that i spoke with such as yourself that the the conversations were quality they were really quality um and in fact it's i'm still following up and having really? follow up from the show um we didn't know what to expect you know mm-hmm. it was really the first post-pandemic show so Mm -hmm. um we didn't know what to expect and you know people told us that the numbers were down Mm -hmm. but that wasn't the feeling that we had at our booth there was always somebody at our booth it was great Mm -hmm. uh so you have to tell me a little bit before we start you'll have to where's queen baller come from is that related to fruit balls or is that something else yes no 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 i'm not a basketballer in my spare time or anything like that I, it's really what my my children uh refer to me at it's like you know the queen bee the queen baller <laughs> getting it all done or pretending to at least <laughs> oh my goodness well before we get into too much of the details let's let's take a moment here i always like it when my guests have a moment to talk about their brand. Can you tell us a little bit yeah. about Fruise Balls and why it exists? Yeah, sure. So my business partner, Jeremy, um, we started our, our careers together quite a, a long time ago back mm. in New Zealand and we started our marketing careers together. 
And uh, Jeremy went out and he um, he quit our fabulous corporate job and uh, he went and started um, these two vegan cafes in New Zealand. Mm. Um, and, you know, that's 20 years ago. So it was a pretty bold thing to do. Um, and anyway, but he was successful and he still is successful. So he went on to become a celebrity chef. Like he was, he was living his passion. Mm. So, you know, he's an author of recipe books and all sorts of things. But one of the things that he used to make in the cafe were these foosballs and he called them bliss balls back then. Okay. So, you know, they would hand roll them and um, customers wanted to take them home. And, you know, he saw a commercial opportunity and so he partnered up with um, another mutual friend of ours who is basically a child genius magician um, oh. when it comes to engineering. He's amazing. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> but he created these fabulous machines that automated the process and commercialized the product. And we have Fruzzles today. And I probably should tell you what they actually are. Yeah, ta um, talk about yeah. that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they're basically, they're a combination of dates and nuts like almonds and cashews um, and they, they're balls rolled in coconut and we've got these two yummy fillings inside um, every fruise ball. Actually, I should show you. Let me show you. Oh, the, yeah. Cool. So, yes. Want to see one? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The ball. So that's the packet. It's a fruise balls packet. Uh-huh. Um. This is what they look like. Yes. They look like a yummy little truffle, I guess you would say. Yeah. And then, then on the inside, you've got these yes. jam and cashew butter. So yes. it's kind of, yeah. So it's just a delicious, healthy snack. Um, it Being tasteful it was the most important thing for us. Um, you know, Jeremy runs cafes. If you don't have good tasting food, people don't come back. Mm -hmm. So, and it's the same with, uh, you know, any, any CPG item, really. Mm -hmm. So um, being tasteful was important, but it also had to really align with our um, philosophies on health. So it had to be yes. um, plant-based. It had to have no added cane sugar. Yes. Um, you know, it's gluten-free, which is just helpful. Um, yes. It happens to be, you know, it's kosher. It's just all the good things. Mm -hmm. The taste is the most important thing. Yeah. Now, a couple of things that I remember that I want to ask about specifically is one is, the manufacturing of these things is a, a wee bit tricky, right? And when yeah. you say a magician, you are not joking. <laughs> I am not joking. Yeah. To yeah. the extent that at um, Sweets and Snacks, a lot of the people that were hanging around our booth were from the really big companies. So we had <laughs> like entire R&D teams that were just standing around trying to figure out how it was that we were able to get these two different fillings with different viscosities and retain the you know the form yeah so i mean yeah it, it really it, it might seem like a simple thing it's like two fillings inside a ball you know how could that be so tricky yeah but uh but clearly it is okay and then i seem to remember that your children may have had some influence on this product and i don't remember how that yeah. is exactly yeah so my um our family are all vegetarian my husband is a lifelong vegetarian the kids are as well um and i am now i have been for the last 20 something years mm -hmm. um so they all yeah they chose um there's some new flavors that are coming out and my daughter in particular jeremy will send her a pot specifically of this new flavor that's not even on the market mm -hmm. um and she's you know quite adamant that that had to be uh you know okay. what it was but they're athletes and and you know they again they wanted good nutritious um food to fuel them excellent now, how's how's been the how's the response in the U.S. been to this? I mean, I'm going to guess after sweets and snacks, your response to sweets and snacks has been pretty yeah. great. Um, yeah. How many are we like are we talking about large retailers, specialty mm -hmm. or everything in between? We're talking about um, some really large retailers, which mm -hmm. is exciting. And that, that will be, you know, watch this space it's coming mm -hmm. soon. Um, we're talking about um, some specialty as well, um, mm -hmm. some really awesome little mum and pop um, setups as well that, you know, I love doing business with with mm -hmm. um, owners like that. Um, yeah, so there's some really cool things coming down the pike for us. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the reaction in the United States, so I... Um, I started doing this four years ago in America and that became my full-time gig. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we started, we, we reformulated, obviously had the kids taste testing to make sure it was something that would be a go. Yeah. Uh, 
And um, we reformulated and then we launched onto Amazon. And the customer response has been tremendous. Really? Um, Yeah, it has. Mm -hmm. Now, as you and I were preparing for this show, we kind of had a moment of clarity or our minds melded. We were talking about what really ended up being is kind of the democratization of healthy Mm. snacking. And what I meant by it when I was talking to you was like taking this idea of healthy eating, which seems to be pointed at kind of a more affluent consumer and and sending it down channel because we want to not only feed these people, but um, we want to, we want to educate them too. And marketing our products is the way we do it. For yeah. you specifically, when we had that moment, what, why did that hit home for you? What was happening in your head? Um, so I grew up in Australia where everybody has access to the fundamentals that I think every human should have access to. You know, one of the things you said in my intro was that my life is guided by the belief that every person is of inestimable value, not just because you're rich or you're poor or whatever right. it is. You are because you are. Mm-hmm. So you should have access to healthcare, great education. I think every person should have an education as, as excellent as my kids have mm. access to in the public mm. system. And nutrition, just mm. good, healthy food. I had not heard of um, food deserts before I lived in America. Oh, really? And, yeah. And to me, the idea that people just don't have access to or ability to get to a supermarket or, you know, that places, you know, businesses aren't opening up in certain communities for, for whatever reason, you know, that they, they exists. It's kind of horrifying to me that um, people don't have access to just basically nourishing food. So, um, you know, that was a really, I did enjoy that conversation with you because it did help to clarify our purpose because we always say we want to make accessible, healthy food. And it's kind of, it's taken a while to really define why that is. But Mm. that is fundamentally we want, you know, we we don't have organic products because it makes it too expensive. So we we try and keep it, you know, below the $2 um, retail market so it's easy to purchase. It's a, it doesn't require any refrigeration. So it can be sold anywhere. It lasts for a long time, but it's still nourishing. So, yeah. you know, there's all of those things came to play into play. Mm. Um, and we may not have really been able to define it clearly, but mm. that's why we do what we do and why we exist. Do you feel that that's something that's been in your just DNA all along and this is just an expression of it? Or do you feel like maybe you came to it through this opportunity? It's it has always been a part of who I am and what I've done. Every, every, um, pretty much every job that I've done has had, it has had to have a higher purpose. Um, mm. Often my, my roles have revolved around children or marketing to children or being about being accessible to children because they don't get a choice, you know, where they're right. born or, you know, they, they don't. So mm. it's up to the rest of us to make sure that they, they, they they're afforded the opportunities that, right that they, you know, to flourish. So I think, um, you know, I, as I said, I grew up in a, in a wonderful family. I had a one, a, one grandmother in particular, her favorite saying was a true lady can dine with, with pigs, <laughs> which sounds kind of odd, <laughs> but it was her absolute belief that she was no better than anyone. And she was no less than anyone. She, mm-hmm. you know, and I just, I think that is, gives you like this really lovely, um, confidence in life. You're not better than me. You're not worse than me. But mm-hmm. you know, we've each got something to share um, mm-hmm. of value. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had a conversation with someone recently who told me that the way American advertising works relies on that better for you, less than you sort mm-hmm. of POV. And she was wondering mm-hmm. out loud during our conversation whether or not that was contributing to this kind of continual divide in healthy yeah. versus not healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, so interesting yeah. that you point that out. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of want to move away even from the term healthy, not healthy and talk yeah. nourish, nourishing. I yeah. think nourishing is a much, I guess it's a real motherhood term, but it's, yes. you know, that, that just makes it warmer somehow. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. 
Well, let's let's step back a few years before Fruise Balls. Um, and maybe don't have to go back to the very beginning of the career, but maybe you can take us down the path of where you were and to the beginning of Fruise Balls. Like, was it coincidences? Do you feel like there was something kind of driving you to this greater good that you would own? And I know that's a really big lofty question to ask, but I'll just lay it out there like that. Yeah, it's it's not. I think um, I lived in Canada. Um, that's one of the countries that my husband and I lived in. Mm-hmm. And there was this brand up there, Silver Hill Hills Bread. Um, mm-hmm. And they had they had this quote on their um, their bread at the time, and it was basically um, referring to that idea or that concept of being of inestimable value. And it really sparked an idea for me. You know, I, I, I even wrote like this philosophy of how one day really? I wanted to run, run a business. So I wanted to run a business where um, the ingre- we purchased the ingredients we did because the end consumer was of inestimable value. The way we treat our employees is because they're of inestimable value. You know, all of those things, the, the, the dealings with externally, external parties, we do it in, an, in such an authentic and, and um, honest way, I guess. I can't think of the correct term. But, you know, we do it in, a, in an upright yes. way because they are valuable people. So, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I know it sounds probably relatively simple, but I've always had that yearning to run a business in that way, mm-hmm. um, that the profits, you know, that they use to help, um, people who may not understand how valuable they are, whether it's mm. because of where they were born or they're homeless or they're, you know, you know, they've they've lived circumstances that have taken that away from them. Mm-hmm. So yes, there's there's been that burning desire from from the beginning of my career probably, but the aha moment was as a result of reading just a line on a on a packet of bread. So yeah. I I love that because I think a lot of people don't know especially when you're a brand Mm. that is a values-based brand, you want to believe that you have a difference, that you can make a difference. And sometimes you don't know that that difference will be inspiring somebody else to Mm. create their own set of inspirations. I I thank you for pointing that out because inspiration comes from everywhere. Literally. The oddest places. Yes. Well, as you, you know, as you, think about um, fruise balls in kind of those earlier days. When did you guys know that you had a good idea? Oh gosh. So Jeremy had done this great job in New Zealand and he had commercialized the product. He had it in pretty much every supermarket. Mm -hmm. Um, And I wasn't involved in the business at that point. Gotcha. Um, But um, life, some life circumstances happened. I was actually yes. made redundant from my dream job and about four years ago. And um, my my amazing husband, and, um, you know, he's like, why don't we do first of all, full time? We both had a background in, in um, you know, food marketing and, yeah. and food grocery business. So it's like, why don't we just give this a go? You know, he still does his full time gig. Does he? Um, and helps. He's amazing. But um, it's like, Okay, we we've, we've got collectively, you know, a lot of experience across four different countries and 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 it's like let's let's just give it a go yeah. while we can. So we did. Um the movement toward plant-based food has never been stronger. Uh you know, even at the right. beginning of launching of launching um Fruzzles, we're like, "Oh, do we put vegan on the on the packet?" because the vegan was always, you know, that granola-ish, hippie, yeah. fringy type word, but now yes. it's like it's 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 a real asset to have that association with with your brand um so you know we still call it plant powered and we want yeah. it to be fun and, and and all of that but it's yeah so you know we, we're vegetarian it's part of who we are and the idea of promoting something that we really believed in um you know we just thought the time was right yeah i spoke with oh who was it now somebody i had on the show a while ago It'll come to me in the shower tomorrow, I'm sure. But (laughs) after I'll look it up after we record here. But this woman told me that plant-based was decidedly created to offset the negative stereotype of vegan. Um, And it was a conscious effort by 
big business to go in that mm-hmm. direction. So yeah. I don't think vegan has the stigma of for a while there, for a great while there, vegans were considered it, like a political movement as much as a That's dietary right. movement. Yes. Now it's softened up quite a bit and um, yeah. it's, it's good. I, I mean, I'm, I'm glad for sure. Yeah. I am too. And I think, you know, the idea again, of nourishing your body, like, and, and the best way to do that is by eating more plants, whole yeah. food plant-based. It yeah. always comes back. You can't just say, you know, blueberries are the, the, the best thing ever and you you know you can't survive without blue you know we've gone through all of those things yes just soy and yes just, you know omega-3 or whatever it might be kale kale exactly <laughs> <laughs> cauliflower it's, but it's it always always comes back to whole food plant-based and a variety mm-hmm. so yeah yeah well now what was the turning point for you where where when did you guys start getting some real traction I sent a very cheeky email to <laughs> um, somebody at Trader Joe's. Oh, did you now? I did. And I said to them, and this is true, I said, I stole your email address from my husband, <laughs> which I did. <laughs> and um, I, I like wrote, you. I like you a lot. <laughs> like, well, I like, give it a go. And then I confessed to it in my email and just said, you know, I stole, stole your email address mm-hmm. and I've got this cool new thing um, and we would love to be a part of your mm-hmm. your lineup and yeah. I just I guess I hit the right person at the right time and they are the most wonderful partner so are they? Tra- Trader Joe's we went you know obviously it had to taste good it had to get through their panel all of the, the the you know the hoops and loops that we had to go through to get there but we we did and so um we we um we launched into Trader Joe's June last year amidst the pandemic amidst everything that's gone on there and um and it, it has absolutely been our tipping point that's wonderful yeah. so <laughs> i i there's so many of those amazing stories over the pandemic i think the pandemic has really created a set of bold and courageous people like yourself taking those risks and d- doing some amazing things now, yeah. as you know, as you're talking about, um, you know, in this uh, Trader Joe's might be the story, but was there uh, any point here, you know, you, your background is more in established organizations, quite large, yeah. if I remember, yes. mm-hmm. uh, multiple layers of management, huge teams, uh, owning supply chains, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. When in this new foosball space, is, were there any like moments of like, oh, like oh, yes. just some ahas or oh's like um, where you're connecting the dots between what was happening at a larger level, but could kind of be connect, could be salvaged by the safety net and, and number mm-hmm. of people that you just like made sense that you just stumbled across here in this moment. Does that make sense what I'm asking? I think that... Um, So the difference between having the safety net and all the processes and all that sort of thing, we just get stuff done, right? So so that's the difference. We take risks, we get stuff done, we fail Mm -hmm. fast. Um, You know, there's been plenty of flavors that we've launched and gone, we've loved it, but the customers didn't. So it's like, okay, you know, not being emotionally attached to to those sorts of things and just flogging that that dead horse. So, um I think the other thing, um, you know, we we learned a lot. Jeremy and I both started in the same, and my husband too, actually. We all started in the same business um, back in New Zealand and Australia, which was phenomenal, a huge breakfast cereal and uh, company. We we, we really had the benefit of, of, you know, we were really invested in and we learned so much and had access to all sorts of different aspects of the business we'll all attribute you know our foundation to that that company mm-hmm. um but then doing it ourselves there's like we still refer to it and say well that wouldn't have happened in this company because it would have taken you know five committees and over yes. 10 years or whatever to get something to market so we just get stuff done um mm-hmm. we do it well um quality all of those sorts of things are never um you know that 
just that focus on the end consumer, that constant yep. focus. Yep. We don't have internal politics that we we get distracted by. Mm-hmm. That's the really wonderful thing about having your own business. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 it's relatively small still. It's like again, it's all about our our customer. So everything we do, the way we talk, you know, the way we market, it's always got to be about the end end customer. Nice. Does that help to kind of answer? Yeah, yeah. I, for sure, for sure. I think um, when I was speaking with Janet Lee, she now works for REI, but when she was working at PepsiCo, she was working in one of those, in the kind of, a, what do you call those little divisions where they're brainstorming mm-hmm. like the, the big ideas? Yeah, and one of the things that she was tasked with doing where her team was tasked with doing was trying to bring in entrepreneurial behaviors mm-hmm. into that mm-hmm. large organization yeah. because they're they were smart enough as an org at the top to understand that they were an albatross um and um yeah. somebody once said you know when you're steering something as big as pepsico you're steering the titanic uh, you can't just make a zag because the implications across yes. the company are too grand yeah. Sometimes that people overthink that then and they get outside they of being true innovation. So mm-hmm. I, th- I think um, always good to n- remind people that when you, uh, and I think that's probably the draw of a lot of people who are leaving big CPG to small mm-hmm. is they want that nimbleness. They want it, that oh, ability. It's, it's fantastic. Like I love, that's one of the things I love about what we do is it's not, it's also not just about the business. Yep. Doing this, and and uh, it has been at the perfect time of my family's life cycle. So, you know, I can I can I'm a mother first, and I always will be a mother first. Mm. So, and I'm mm-hmm. not I'm not apologising about that to anyone. That's mm-hmm. what that's who I am at the very core of me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, being able to drive my daughter to diving or or, or whatever it might be. Yep, I really value um, the ability to run my business around my life. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I love it. So what's the future for look like for you and maybe Fruise Balls? What can we look forward to seeing from you? You can look forward to seeing Fruise Balls in a lot more places. Um, you can look forward to seeing a lot more flavors and, and more interesting marketing coming up as well. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess I can just say watch this space. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And uh, any advice that you would like to give to other either entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs. Now you're in year four of Fruise Balls, mm. right? And you've launched only in the last year, if that doesn't give anybody kind of a wink mm. and a nudge on what that process looks like. It's yeah. Like keep going. If you really know that you've got something special and that something, you know, the fundamentals are there. Just keep trying. The other thing is networking and being available to help other people and allowing other people to help you. Yes. I think, you know, is don't be proud, I guess is what I can say. <laughs> you know, there's plenty of times where I've, you know, at the very beginning of this, I was hauling boxes in the back of my car, banging my head on them, <laughs> scaffolding in the in the warehouse and you know, we were packing up variety ba- uh, variety boxes in the basement. You know, you know, there was it was hard, hard yards. Yes. Um, and at, at times we were just like, really, is this worth it? Um, but we persisted, and you know, we're super grateful that it that it that it is worth it. It has been worth it for us, and it continues yeah. to be. Yes, that's wonderful. Now. We're kind of coming up towards the end of our recording time. And I always have a set of questions that I like to ask every Mm -hmm. guest. And Mm -hmm. the first one is, do you have, I call it a cocktail hour tidbit. Um, Do you have an interesting fact that you like to share? And it could be about what you, the business that you are in now or anything from your previous life that I, that you Mm. usually whip out and people go, Oh, I didn't know that that many people bought lipstick on a given day or whatever that might be. Um, hmm. I I don't know. Okay. Um, I, I guess, I mean, if I was going to talk about 
luxury. Um, you know, it would be like I was a, a, a vegetarian cooking instructor. That was my very first job in life. So, Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So if you want to come over, our, our Blair and I love having people over. Okay. So, you know, well, what's your address again? I'll take that down. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you guys and the, your whole family is vegetarian, right? We are. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, are there any other women leaders or rising stars out there and that you mm. are watching or not watching, but that you would like to elevate or just simply publicly admire? Yeah, actually, there, there really are. Um, there's one lady that I've encountered recently and she is extraordinary. Her name's um, Vicki Reese. Okay. And she runs she runs this um, community, huge community, um, online community called Joy of Mum. And okay. Vicky Vicky is all about providing safe spaces um, for mums to support each other. Okay, um, I'm just starting to get a little more involved in okay. the mentoring side of that. Okay, but, you know she she's she's really real. So I. I you know, she's got a and she's got a huge community. It's it's millions of mums that she. Oh my gosh! Has yeah, she's amazing. But she doesn't do anything paid. Like there's, it's it's a truly authentic community that she has developed, and she's very yeah. protective of. So I love Vicky. Um, I think Madeline Hayden from Nut oh. Pods. She yeah, is from Seattle. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> Madeline. Um, Madeline was really willing um to provide me with advice in the beginning. Really. As well. She's, and I love, I'm really grateful for women who are open and, you know, it's like, this is what I've learned. The world is big enough for us all to have a piece of the pie. Yes. You know, I'm, the generosity of advice and, and kindness like that, you know, I just really appreciated um, Madeline. And then the other woman, I'm, I'm, I can rave on about all the fabulous women. Sure, <laughs> yes. Actually, in my office, I have this whole, I have these two shelves and it's all about girl bosses and I have pictures of these inspiring women in my life. Oh, nice. <laughs> I love days. that. I it's have something know. not this exactly the same, but very similar. Very yeah. similar. Yes. Yeah. And the other, the other woman is, um, her name's Kristen Schroeder and she is the um, co-founder of a business called Moonlight Beverage. You probably haven't encountered Kristen mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. She and her husband have created these really cool drinks and they're all about, um, they're all about elevating um, women's health and especially like um, sexual wellness, oh. which is kind of like a taboo area. I know. Oh yeah. But especially in the U.S. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh. But um, she, what she's doing for women and what she's doing in her business are just fantastic. So yeah, Moonlight Beverage. They're Moonlight worth checking Beverage. Out. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, curious. The first woman that you mentioned. How did you connect with her? Um, through a fantastic guy called John Galecka, who is a okay. um, he has his own um, ad agency, and I'd done a little work with him. Yeah. And um, I guess he he felt that connecting us would be. Of value okay. for us both. Yeah, it was a really great heart, heart, soul connection. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's how I encountered Vicky. Mm, okay. And then my last question for you is uh, what brands or trends, it could, in our kind mm. of our, our space, what do you have your eye on and why are you watching it? Oh, goodness. Um, I mean, I guess. There's a lot of really disruptive um, brands in the vegan space, mm -hmm. not necessarily our competitive space, right. but in the in the vegan space that I yes. I find fascinating the Beyond Meats and the Impossibles and all of those. I just think what they're doing and how they're doing it, and even um, like Miyoko's, like the way yes. she took on dairy um, and said, you know what, it's okay for us to, to use the term butter. Like she just she just single handedly almost yes won that battle against a behemoth. So, yes. yeah, so I guess I, I'm watching companies that are doing really meaningful things as well. Um, you know, I, I want to learn from other companies and how they live their purpose and, and yes. I want to replicate that in, in our yes. business too. Yeah. Mm, I love that. That's wonderful. I, I'm i sure I have a handful of women. They're not coming to me right now, but I, I have a few people that should probably connect you to in your spare time, you can reach out to them. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> I know. 
Well, we've been talking with Sherry Jackson. Co- are you co-founder or are you founder? How do you? I'm I'm co-owner. And oh, you're I'm co-owner. The, yeah, co-founder here in the in okay. United States for sure. Great. Yeah. Okay, co-founder and CEO of Fruise Balls. Sherry, where can people learn more about you? Go to www.fruiseballs.com. Um, you can, and, and then just pop into Trader Joe's and go and buy some. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for your time today. And thank you for all that you're doing. We can see that you are, we should be keeping an eye on you for sure. <laughs> I'm excited to watch Fruise Balls grow into whatever it's going to be. Thanks, Diana. Thank you so much. Of course. All right, everybody. We'll see you again next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe and share with your network. Until next time, be well and do gooder.